Hi everyone! Today, we are going to discuss media and globalization. But before that, we were going to present the flow of the discussion of this topic. First, we discussed, we will define the media and its types. Second, the definition of globalization. Third, the role of media play in the globalization. Fourth, the relationship between media and globalization. Fifth, what is the meaning of cultural imperialism and global village? Sixth, advantage and disadvantage of global village. And last, social media and the creation of the cyber ghettos. That is the flow of the discussion today. Okay, but before that, we're going to discuss what is media. Media, it is a refer to various means of communication. For example, television, radio, and a newspaper are the example of media. The term can also be used as a collective noun for the press and our reporting agencies. Again, so media is a means of communication, meaning other, another way of communication through television, radio, and a newspaper, we can share information. And also media, um, in another term, it can be the press or news reporting agencies. Then another is that in the computer world, media is a, used as collective noun, but refers to different types of data storage options. Again, another term of media, it is a press or news reporting agencies. In a computer world, media is the different types of data storage options. Next, a professor of global studies, who is he, Jack Lewell, describes media as means of conveying something, such as a channel of communication. Okay, according to him, he, ex he expound that um, media is conveying something. If we say conveying something, it can be opinions, uh, views, um, message, and information that is very relevant to the many people. So you, they use channel of communication. That is according to Jan Jack Lull. Next is we have media theorist. Um, he is Marshall McLuhan. He declared that the medium is the message. The most important is the message, according to him, because the message contains relevant information. No? Okay. He added that the different media simultaneously extend and amputate human sense. Meaning to say, um, all people today is um, really, really used media. New media may expand the reach of communication. But they also dull the user's communication capacities, yes. So, um, through the, the vast implications of new media nowadays, um, there are lots or there are some of the, of the users are lack of communicative capacity so that they are um, behind on the, on the advancement of this, um, global, in this globalized world. That is the me that is according to Marshall McLuhan. Again, we have three types of media. Um, print media. If I say print media, it includes books, magazines, and newspapers. Okay. Next, we have broadcast media. It is include a radio, film, and television. Example of television are the ABS, CBN, and the JMA. They are what we call the broadcast media. Next, we have digital media. Okay, an example of digital media, email, internet sites, social media, and internet-based video and audio. Means to say, in digital media, that's what we're going to use today, um, Facebook, Instagram, are example of digital media, which is runs by the internet-based. That is digital media. Okay, so much for media next is what is globalization we already know that in the first lesson we define what is globalization but we are going to define it again 
Globalization refers to the or describes the process by which regional economies, societies, and cultures have become integrated through a global network of political ideas, through communication, transportation, and trade. That is the definition of globalization. No, it is a connection of a different um, economy, societies, and cultures. They are integrated or connected to each other through a global network. No, because of the communication, transportation, and trade. Because of that, they have uh, communication or they have a connection to each other. Okay, globalization, the term also refers to the transnational circulation of ideas if we say transnational go beyond the borders of the national that is the meaning of transnational circulation of ideas go beyond sila language and the popular culture that's why another culture no sa ibang country is magpunta sa ating lugar globalization refers to the growing interconnectedness of a different parts of the world a process which is gives rise to complex forms of interaction and interdependency if we say globalization uh, the interconnectedness of a different uh, parts of the world they have a communication to each other they have a complex forms of interactions no, if we say interdependency, they are, are really, really dependent to each other. All the parts of the world, the different parts of the world connected to each other because they are helping to each other. Okay, next is we're going to discuss what role do the media play in the rush towards globalization? To some, globalization means the transfer of ideas. Yes, it is a transfer of ideas and culture from a developed, West to the underdeveloped world, resulting in the homogenization of consumerist culture across the borders that threatens to disrupt permanently alter indigenous values. So that's the um, the effects of uh, media in globalization. Okay, the homogenization of consumerist, which is the it can disrupt or threatens the culture. Of the indigenous people and their values. Yet others might suggest that the flow of ideas occurs in the multiple directions, resulting in less homogenization and more diversification of ideas and lifestyles. Again, homogenization uh, will be discussed in the next of these slides. Okay. Next, even this general models ta mark the true depth and complexity of the global reach of the media, what is asserting is that globalization has greatly expanded. Yes, globalization has greatly expanded the importance of what is information lies. That is why the, expand, the expansion of globalization, um, um, there is also the importance of the information that is uh, that, that, that lies in the, within the public sphere. And the sharing of information will be undoubtedly continue to have an effect both on the lives of private individual vis a vis, their relationships with each other and their nation states. So it means to say, um, and the information in this the globalized world must be genuine or uh, must be authentic because um, the information has a effects of the lives of the individuals you know, in their really of their uh, of their daily living no the relationship is very the relationships of the reliable information of the many people is very important so that we can say that the glo we can say that the globalized world um uh, has also a positive effects okay what is the relationship between media and globalization the mass media are seen today as a play role in enhancing globalization, facilitating culture exchange and multiple flows information and image between countries through international news broadcast, television programming, new technologies and music. Nowadays, mass media plays a key role in extension of globalization process. 
the media components such as television, internet, computers, and etc. are considered to have a paramount influence on globalization. Also, because of globalization process today, there is an increased access to a broad range of media, which plays a very important role in shaping human minds and has an immense impact on our society's personal lives. Thus, these two equally important processes interact with each other and provide mutual assistance in the expansion of the sphere of influence. So, in uh, simple terms, media and globaliz globalization comes along with each other, which is uh, because of media, there is an extension of globalization process, and because of globalization, uh, there is a broad range uh, with the usage of media. What is cultural imperialism? According to Gray, cultural imperialism is a process of social influence by which a nation imposes on other countries its set of beliefs, values, knowledge, and behavioral norms, as well as its overall style of life. And that it also refers most broadly to the exercise of domination in cultural relationships in which the values, practices, and meanings of a powerful foreign culture are imposed upon one or more nature culture. So, an example of this cultural imperialism was uh, what was happened in the Philippines. So, how was the Philippines imperialized? Um, by the Philippine American War, 1899 and 1902, after its defeat in the Spanish American War of 1898, the Spain ceded its long standing colony of the Philippines to the United States in the Treaty of Paris. And also, an early example of the cultural imperialism was the Roman Empire, where early Rome, in its conquest of Italy, assimilated the people of Etruria by replacing the Etruscan language with Latin, which led to the demise of, the, of that language and many aspects of Etruscan civilization. What is Global Village? By definition, a global village is the idea that people are connected by easy travel, mass media, and electronic communications and have become a single community. It is a phenomenon of the entire world becoming more interconnected as the result of the propagation of media technologies throughout the world. The world viewed as a community in which distance and isolation have been dramatically reduced. An example of it is all the combined societies throughout the world. And why is Global Village important? It's because Global Village is the name for the vision of a new human habitat, offering virtually all of the services and amenities of cities while still preserving the rural quality of life and care for healing and human dimension. These are the advantages of Global Village. 1. Resources can be sourced from various countries in order to produce goods and services more efficiently. 2. Efficient global trade allows consumers to have a much larger variety of products and services to choose from. 3. These products and services are made brought to market at much lower prices due to competitive forces worldwide. 4. Consequently, companies are able to procure the necessary input materials and services at more competitive prices due to global supply. 5. Companies have access to much wider, larger, multinational markets. 6. Peace and understanding, goodwill and cultural alignment is facilitated 
among countries that were once vastly different and at war. 7. Opportunity for investments have expanded beyond national borders. 8. Import and export laws have made it easier to sustain optimal global supplies of essential goods commodities since countries are now able to focus in their core competencies and rely on international trade. 9. Adverse effects of fluctuations in agricultural productions in one area can be reduced by pulling production from other areas. The disadvantages of our global village 1. Developed countries can stifle development of undeveloped and underdeveloped countries. 2. Economic depression in one country can trigger adverse reaction across the global. 3. Increased movement of products and people across the global facilitates the spread of diseases, thus increasing the risk of outbreaks. 4. Global competition puts pressure on small businesses who do not have resources to compete in a global scale. Globalization is a hindrance to local small business operation. 5. Ease of access to cheaper labor abroad has been detrimental to employment standard in most developed countries. Companies are moving production offshore, causing unskilled workers to move into entry-level service, work where pay is low and turnover is high. 6. The world is experiencing a shift towards widespread languages and the dominance of Western cultural values. Her average, one language dies in every 14 days. By the next century, nearly half of the roughly 7,000 languages spoken on Earth will likely disappear as communities abandon native tongues in favor of English and Spanish. What is social media and the creation of cyber ghettos? Refers to the means of interactions among people in which they create share, and or exchange information and ideas in virtual communities and networks. So social media is a medium where we can easily give and take information from anyone. It is also where we can express ourselves through posting anything, but of course with cautions. Few media scholars argue that the world is becoming culturally homogeneous. A homogeneous societal culture is one in which the shared meanings are similar and of course there is a little variation in beliefs exist. And due to that variations, we cannot avoid certain things like cyber crimes or it could be cyber bullying or cyber ghettos. So cyber ghetto in particular is a place on the internet where a social group is marginalized. Of course, we can't avoid those things. That's why we should be aware on whatever we post or whoever we get into with on social media or the internet. So globalization, on the other hand, is a situation in which available goods and services or social and cultural influences gradually become similar all over the world. We all know that globalization is the process where the exchange of trades, goods, and services happens. And of course, the rising technology or the innovating technology is a big factor that fastens the process of globalization nowadays. The worldwide spread of technology creates vast connections that create new opportunities on a larger scale, and that's a fact. The current focus of the globalization of technology is the connections created by networks of social media. That is why we should be mindful, we should be um, cautious on what we post on our social media accounts, on how we handle our social media accounts, because that is the main focus of glo globalization of technology nowadays, the connections, our connection with other people in the whole wide world. Social media and the creation of cyber ghettos. The internet and social media are proving that the globalization of culture and ideas can move in different directions. It is a fact that the internet has been a powerful medium for we can easily adapt on whatever we see, on especially in social media. 
For instance, I've read an article um, which tackles about the culture of the Korean people and what is their way of living. By that, I gain information about the Korean people from the internet. They can also learn our culture or my, my culture if they want to and if they look into it over the internet. Due to the fact that the internet consists, is consists of millions of informations about the whole wide world. While Western culture remains powerful and media production is still controlled by a handful of powerful Western corporations, the internet, particularly the social media, is challenging previous ideas about media and globalization. Social media have both beneficial and negative effects, and we all know that. These forms of communication have democratized access. Anyone with an internet connection or a smartphone can use Facebook and Twitter for free. These media have enabled users to be consumers and producers of information simultaneously. Having an internet connection and smartphone enables us to be the consumers and producers of information. Since it has both beneficial and negative effects, we should always remember the saying, think before you click. There are a lot of people and concerned citizens who tries their best to educate everyone, educate the internet consumers, internet users about the proper netiquette in order to av avoid cyber crime, cyber bullying or whatever and so on. Also, we should have this technique of a um, uh, proper uh, way on how to filter the uh, facts and re reliable sources from the false and the um, and informations that will lead us to confusion. We should take note of this. As consumers of media, users must remain vigilant and learn how to distinguish fact from falsehood in a global media landscape that allows alternative facts. That's what I have mentioned earlier. And through people must remain critical of mainstream media and traditional journalism that may also operate based on vested interest. We must also insist that some sources are more credible than others. A lack of coordination and cooperation regarding cyber security among nation states could create cyber security ghettos or cyber ghettos and undermine the security of the global cyber environment. So it is very understandable and clearly stated on the slide. Summary. Technology and increasingly media has always driven globalization. Media have various and diverse effects of globalization process. Global television is creating a global monoculture. Media businesses have benefited from globalization due to the reduced time and space making the world a global village. Globalization had caused widespread of information as print media and broadcast media was introduced. Media will cut out cultures and ideas to people, specifically to the, those who don't interact. Media like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram will continue to be the source or part of the cause of the social change. According to Milton Friedman, the internet is the most effective instrument we have for globalization. So that's all for today. Thank you for listening and once again, good day.